Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is a home interview, Wilton, New York. Um, it is the 29th of June, 2007, approximately 10:15 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Yes, it's Julia H. Smith. I was born here in South Wilton. Uh, on December 20th, 1921. What was your educational background prior to entering service? High school graduate. Okay. Now, um, why did you decide to go, go into the service? Well, Pearl Harbor, and I knew my brother was over in the Philippines. And I thought, well, how, you know, why do they have to bomb us? I mean, it was that because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I had to wait until I was 21. I was 19, I think, when the war started. All right. Um, 20 or tw 20, I guess. Now, what what branch of service did you join? Well, I joined the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. They always forget that there was an auxiliary corps before the Army, Women's Army. Yes, before the wax. Yeah. And that was in February of 1943. Where did they send you for your basic training? I went to Fort Oglethorpe in Georgia. Okay. And what was that like? Oh, was that was that wasn't too bad, but it was was it was a nice place to be, but uh, we had to you know the barracks were brand new. You had to go to the the bath bathroom. We had a bathroom in the barracks, <coughs> but to take showers and stuff, you had a I was in the very last barrack, so we had to go all the way down. And of course, it, when it rained, you got to, you know, you went down, you got your shower, you came back walking through the mud and stuff. But it was it was a good place to get basic training. But I was only there for like three weeks. Was that your first time away from home? No, no, I was already away from home. I joined from. I was working in New Jersey, oh, okay. and uh, so I joined from Newark. Mm -hmm. I left from Newark, New Jersey. And then when I got through with basic, it, uh, I was scared to death I was going to get cooks and bakers. <laughs> I didn't want that. But they sent me to uh, Stephen F. Austin State Teachers College in Nagadocious, Texas, Texas, for um, uh, administrative training. And uh, that was a good, that was very good there. I liked that. How long was that uh, training for? I think I went there, it, it was the end of March, and then to the end, to the beginning of May, March, April, May. It's about two months, two or three months. Mm -hmm. And from there, I got transferred to uh, Gowan Field in Boise, Idaho, which was an Air Force, Army Air Force base. Mm -hmm. And I was there until the end of the war. Were there very many other women stationed there? We had about, there were two barracks. So I think we were about a hundred or so uh, there. Maybe, I can't remember how many were in each barrack, but there were two. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had our own section. We had our own mess hall. We had our own, uh, uh, you know, our own, we had our own little spot where we they built for us. Now what were your duties there? Well. When I first went, my first job there was, uh, I was uh, worked in an orderly room, and I liked that. And then, <laughs> this is a strange thing that happened. Uh, this fellow came to the base, and he had, I don't know how many degrees. So they were so excited about this fellow, he was going to straighten things out at the headquarters that needed straightening out and so forth. But the poor guy was, I think, more of a, uh, you know, he was so busy getting his, these uh, degrees and things that uh, he couldn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. So they replaced, they took, they gave him my job and they sent me out. I went, and luckily I loved it working out there. I was sent out to the main gun, main tower on the gunnery range. And that, that's the work that I, you know, this is where you, uh, tra they had to, the, the crews had to have, certain amounts of training in weapons and so we had this is you know they had little tough places but we had to schedule their whole you know whatever they had mm -hmm. to do and i liked that it was just a, the main big control of her got to fire the 50 calibers <laughs> oh you got to do that 
<laughs> just to, you know, just because I wanted to, and then uh -huh. I fired some carbines. A couple of other weapons I would have liked to have tried to fire, but I never got to them. Now, growing up in the nice. growing up in the country, had you fired guns before? No, 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 never. No. But when I fired the first time, I fired that 50 caliber. I did, they told me just one click at a time. Well, I pushed it down, and I got about three or four clicks, and my hat went flying. <laughs> the gun, so I didn't go flying. <laughs> But that was then. But another thing that happened while I was out there, that one of the B-24s crashed right at the end of the runway. I mean, at the end of the gun range. I don't think anybody got killed because I saw them going down, uh, and it went down kind of. You know, they knew they were going to go down, mm -hmm. so they they piloted it down. So they came down sort of in the nose, but flattish. You know, mm -hmm. so they didn't it didn't burst into flame or anything. And I think some of them got hurt, but I don't think any of them got killed. So I was there for, you know, until the end of the war. And I liked Boise. Boise was a great place. What did the you like about it? Big. Oh, it's just nice, you know, the scenery, the weather, everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, the people were nice. So it was just a great place to be for, you know, if you had to be there. Then, uh, then when the war ended, you know, they lit us out on the point system after the war. And of course, having gone in, you know, right from the start, at, or, well, practically from the start, uh, they weren't sure they were going to keep the women, so I had to, you know, take a discharge. Now, what rank were you when you were discharged? Uh, I was a sergeant. And uh, about a year later, uh, they called and said that they were take, going to t start taking the women back. Well, by that time I was working at GE and I just decided, well, maybe I'm... No, I wasn't working at GE. I was still in New Jersey, working in New Jersey. So then I came back, my mother got sick, and I came back and got a job at GE. And uh, I wasn't too happy. And in the meantime, they had split the Air Army and the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back. They, you know, then they had the women in the Air Force. Oh, the other thing was, I in September of '43, uh, I re, you know we we were discharged from the auxiliary corps and immediately taken in. If you wanted to stay in, girls got out, but I wanted to stay in. I had we had signed up for the duration of the war plus six months. Mm -hmm. So at that point in Boise, I you know I reenlisted, and that's that that that's when I became women in the army, mm -hmm. the WAC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then when we got to the Air Force, uh, I, I, I went down to, there's Kelly Field and I, there's the other field down in San Antonio. Kelly, and I can't, the one that where I went just for assignment. I didn't have to go through basic again, but they gave us a whole big choice of schools that we could go to. So Lackland. I chose Machine Accounting, which was Lackland. Lackland Air Force Base. Lackland, that's yeah, right, right next Lackland door. Force, oh. yeah. Kelly was, down there, then up yeah. the hill, and Lackland. Yeah, I was there for like Lackland three had weeks. Lackland had no Until you know, to pick, you get an assignment. Mm -hmm. And I chose the Machine Accounting, which was the beginning of the counting age. So from there, I went to Lowry Air Force Base in Denver, and took uh, you know the, the there. I was there about six months, I think, in Denver. And then from there, they gave you a choice of bases. And the closest one to home was, uh, was the, um, in Washington, where they take off. Um, my memory is not as good as it should be on some of these names. So the one where the presidents take off from, and Andrews. Andrews, that, that yes. Was little, that was the little uh, Pentagon. Uh -huh. And I, I like that. That was a good assignment. That was uh, MATS, Military Air Transport Service Headquarters. And then uh, one of the, the girls that was there was being transferred to Westover Air Force Base in Massachusetts, and she didn't want to go. And I said, oh boy, I'd love to go there because that's close to home. So I managed to get transferred to Westover. And uh, I was at Andrews, I don't know, for about a year or so, I think. And then at Westover for about a year or so. And then the <clears throat> where I worked at, I was always in headquarters groups um, at, at uh, Westover. 
the master sergeant that we had there, we became kind of friends. And there was an opening in Hawaii. So he said, Julia, he said, how would you like to go to Hawaii? I said, well, I don't know. I'd like to, but I, let me think about it. And in the meantime, I had been babysitting for the colonel. So about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the colonel comes in. He says, Judy, he says, I hope you're not going to be angry with me. He said, I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> so there I, I stayed there. But about a month later, call came from the Pentagon for people to replace, you know, where they, to replace people. And then nobody, you couldn't, that was, he couldn't do anything about that. So mm -hmm. I got sent to the Pentagon. It's been about, I don't know, about a year and a half at the Pentagon. I love that. I like that. That was a good, that mm -hmm. was a good place to be. Did you see any uh, important generals? Uh, oh, yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> the one I liked the best was meeting. The face that, you know, I, I didn't speak to him, and I probably should have saluted, but I didn't, with General Omar Bradley. Uh -huh. And then I did see, you know, sort of at, at a distance, um, General Vandenberg. And, uh, well, for General Vandenberg, he was dying with cancer, and he didn't want a big, he was retiring, and he didn't want a big to-do, so they had a small, uh, parade for him at Andrews, in which we, we went, you know, we were in. And then the other one was the North Strand, General North Strand. North Strand or North Strand, I forget. Strand. So, you know, and you'd see different people in walking. I like the Pentagon, it was, you know, the concourse was nice. And then down in the basement they had all these stores and things. And mm -hmm. That's where I saw General Omar Bradley. I guess he went shopping or something. <laughs> And then the Voice of America was down there too, so I liked. I had all good assignments. I really did. So and now, course, what kind of housing did you have when you were in Washington? We had. We were at. It was called Fort Myers, but there there were two barracks for men, for the Air Force men, and two barracks for the Air Force women. Mm -hmm. You know, separate. And they were good. We we each had a room. It was you know we did. It wasn't a. It wasn't like a dormitory. It was little rooms. We each had our own little room. Oh. When I was at Westover, uh, they, they, they built new housing for the officers, quarters, you know, the married officers. And so they, they, we gave up, we were in barracks when I first went there, you know, where you had the open barrack. Mm -hmm. And then they, they, uh, the women were given the housing, that the, the old housing that the officers' families were vacating. So we had to look, you know, they're like four of us to an apartment. So that was nice, you know. Yeah. And uh, what else? There was something else I was thinking of. Well, I guess that's what I was going to say about the apartments at Westover. But and then uh, when uh, when Korea the Korean War ended, they said anybody that had three and a half years, you know, I had a four year enlistment, you know, couldn't take a discharge. So I just I had I only had three more months to go. So I decided I was going to take the discharge. So, but the one thing that I that I was disappointed in, I, I got out as a staff sergeant, but I almost made tech. But this one, they decided to give us tests. They did. prior to this, it was recommendation, you know, by mm -hmm. their officers. And this time, they decided to do a test, and the fellow they had make the test up, put questions in there that we need needed didn't really need to have, mm -hmm. and. I missed by I missed out on tech by about five points, and even the smart ones didn't get very you know didn't make very that that high grades because of those. There were like two or three questions in there that everybody complained about. They said, "Why were these in here?" Because mm -hmm. just, it's nothing that we would have used, you know. So anyway, but on the whole, I sometimes wonder if I should have stayed in or should have got. But anyway, I got out and I got a job at GE and worked there for 28 years. So. Oh. I was, uh, but it was it was a great experience. I would, I don't know about today if I would join, but the way that the we were separate, we had everything separate. We had, mm -hmm. uh, in when it, during the war, we had bed check at twelve o'clock. You had to be there. Uh, at you know during the uh, with the rest of the, when I was in the Air Force, of course it was, we weren't at war, so we could wear civilian clothes and. But during the war, you wore nothing but your uniform, mm -hmm. which I didn't mind. I didn't mind. I liked the uniform. I liked it better than any they have now. Even though we had the khakis, and the Air Force was blue. Uh -huh. But uh, 
the in the when, in the uh, you know in the black it was the khaki colors, but I met some wonderful people um, from all walks of life. There, but there was I probably would have done better, you know, uh, getting a rank. But you know, there were so many more people in during the war than there were later on. Yeah. So it was easier later on. Mm -hmm. But you still had to know your your what you were doing. I was in charge of uh, it's Pentagon for not too long a time. I don't know about a year, about a half, but maybe not quite a year. I finally they put me in charge of. Uh, Worldwide aircraft reports, you know, making the records, doing the records for the air. So that was, and we used all this IBM equipment, you know, the mm -hmm. old equipment. Yeah. Now they have these things in little tiny slots, then the machines. So Must have been a room whole room. Full. Yeah. Yes, it was one room full that I shouldn't have really gone into because I had, I was cleared for a secret, but not top. And this room was top secret. But I had a friend that worked in there, and the, the, the equipment that was there, there was a console in the middle of the room. And all these huge, big machines around it, you know, to take down all the records. And now they can get it on a pinhead, right? Mm -hmm. But there was one room where they had nothing but light bulbs. He, the, the officer there told me what the why it, what they had. But I remember thinking, boy, if you wanted to punish somebody, just stick them in that room for a minute, you know, <laughs> with all those light bulbs going. I never saw so many light bulbs in one place in one like this room. It was about this side, and the whole thing had nothing but light bulbs. Lit. <laughs> hmm. They were lit. So I don't know about anything else you want to ask. When did you finally discharge? In year? September of 53. Now have you stayed in contact with any of the people you served I with? I pretty much lost contact with most of them. One girl up until about two years ago and she had cancer so I, I, I haven't heard from her since. I've sent her cards and I get no cards, so at Christmas time we use the exchange. So I assume she's gone. I don't know. No, because over the years you kind of, you know, you go your separate ways yeah. and uh, other things come in. You, you just, you know, you're doing other things. And I don't oh, I just, I still have one from the, the, when I was in the wax. We were good friends and when she got married I was her maid of honor. And, and so we still uh, exchange Christmas cards and exchange a letter at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. But her husband has, he, he died several years ago. And she's, you know, we're both the same age. So I don't know, how, I don't know, uh, she did have a problem, but I don't think, I don't know if she has, uh, I think she's doing fairly well now. But now you had several brothers in the service. All four, all four of us. I had three brothers and myself, so the whole family was in the service. Hmm. No, John went in first. Actually, what he wanted was to go to West Point. And my mother at that time had uh, Duval, King and Duval. I don't know if anybody remembers them. The lawyers. Oh. King and Duval. No. Well, in those days, you know, even here in Saratoga, you couldn't get a job in Saratoga. That was during the Depression. And so uh, my mother did go to Do Joe DeVal and he tried, but they never, never, nothing ever came of getting him into mm -hmm. uh, West Point. And uh, what about your other brothers? So when the war, when the when, you know, when John, we found out that he was, you know, had been in the Philippines and he was missing. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined first, because the black came up first. And then Chip uh, joined the Marines. I think he joined, I joined in February, and I think he joined like in Iris, he, he just died, but Iris could tell you more about his service, mm -hmm. you know, but I was away from home so much, I never really, uh, you know, stayed here that long until I came back after I retired, but she, she has pictures and... So he was in the Marines in the Pacific? In, and he, he fought in the Pacific at, at Iwo Jima. He was on Iwo Jima. That must have been pretty stressful yeah, for your pretty, parents. Yeah. <laughs> and then then after, Mike couldn't go in until, because he was, he was a, uh, in high school still, but, you know, uh, and I think he had three weeks of basic training, whatever they call it in the Navy, he joined the Navy. And I can't, he was in on D, Normandy D-Day anyway, he was, he was, uh, 
he had the three weeks in, ba in his training and immediately it was shipped overseas. But the, uh, there was his, uh, I forget the, he had to be 44 when he went in. Because mm -hmm. the war didn't end until 45. And it was towards the end of 44 because Normandy, it wasn't at the end of 44? Yeah, um, June of 44. June of 44, yeah. yeah. So that's what, that's what he, when he was, uh, three weeks prior to that, he, he was, uh, he only had three weeks. I remember he only had boot camp three weeks, I think I, they said. So everybody survived, though. We all survived the war, yeah. Hmm. Until it's natural, you know, until you get to the old age bit. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever use the GI Bill? Was anything Yeah, from I it? did. I, uh, I, I uh, took a, I used it once. I went to, I took a, did I take it once or what, twice? Because I went, after I got out, I, I decided to go to, I took a course in interior decorating in New York City. And that, so I, I did that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I lived for a year in, he bought a house, in, John bought a house in West Palm Beach, Florida. And so I lived down there, and so I went to a, a junior secretarial school. And uh, that was in West Palm Beach. So that's never used either one of the things though. Because when I got when I worked for GE, I worked in I did accounts payable and I did requisition billing and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know. So I how, how do you it. think your time in the service had an effect on your life? It changed my life by about three hundred and sixty degrees. Because before that it, actually the crazy part was that up until I was twenty one I was I was Helen Bis, Helen J. Bis. My mother wanted me to be named Helen Julia. And I guess when my father went to sign me up, either they misunderstood at the, you know, where they sign you up. Mm -hmm. But anyway, on my birth certificate, I'm Julia Helen. Never knew that until I was 21. <laughs> and uh, it just, I, I, was, I was not the happiest person until I was 21 because I was always so very shy and everything. And I never felt comfortable with Helen, never understood why until I got in found out I was Julia, not Helen. <laughs> so for 40, for, since 1943, I've been Julia Helen. But one, one, I've told people I don't answer to Helen, <laughs> but the one family still calls me Helen. They got it wrong, and when Chip, it's Chip's family. They put it, it was, everybody said, who is Helen J? You know, they knew that I had brothers, but they didn't know who Helen J was. <laughs> <laughs> But they got it right in the, in when they put it in for Mike's obituary. But anyway, no, so all four of us, back in 1940, about around 1944 or so, I think, it was also an article in the Saratoga where they had all four of us pictured mm. and told, you know, that we that the whole family was in. We got our 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for your interview. Well, and I don't know, I'll have to have, I thought, um, Lisa wanted to be here for this, and, but she works and she can't get away all the time. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get the papers. Okay, and I'll, I'll give you. Filled out. Okay. And you can give me an address. So I give you my card with the address so you okay, can send it to Okay, and I'll mail it to you. Okay. Or, well, if 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 uh, Mick would have loved to have been here for this, but you know, he left on the twenty fourth. Yes. His father died on the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. No, the twenty. Yeah, twenty fifth. So what do we do? Okay, well, thank you very much. So, and I don't know if, yeah, are you interested in doing the other two interviews? You won't be able to do interviews except with their children. Um, I, I don't think 